Welcome to section 4.4, Scatter Plots and Trend Lines. Today's objectives are to investigate relationships between quantities by using scatter plots. And we're going to write equations of trend lines and lines of best fit. And use a trend line or line of best fit to make predictions. So scatter plots. A scatter plot is a graph that relates two different sets of data in ordered pairs. We can describe scatter plots based on the trends that they show, and these are called correlations. Like I said, a correlation is used to describe the relationship between the two variables that are in a scatter plot or in a set of data. And if you look at the one on the left, your positive correlation, your y increases as your x increases. If you were to draw a line, you would have a positive slope. For the one in the middle, y decreases as x increases. This is a negative correlation, and if you would draw a line, you would have a negative slope. And the one on the right has no correlation because the x and y are not related, and we cannot draw a line that would represent the data very well because they're scattered all over the place. And there's no trend that we can see. These are the three types of correlation we will have. We'll have positive, negative, or no correlation. Here it says to determine whether the graph shows a positive, negative, or no correlation. If there is positive or negative correlation, describe the meaning in the situation. So when you look at this, if we could draw a line through these points, you could draw a line that would roughly look like this. So we can draw a line that represents the data. This has positive correlation. The line has a positive slope. And we have to explain how this is working. And it says here, we have hours as our independent. We have wages as our dependent variables. So as hours increase, as our independent increases, the wages also increase. So we have a positive correlation. And this is why. As our hours are going up, our wages are going up. So the line of best fit. The line of best fit, also called a trend line, is the line that shows a relationship between two sets of data most accurately. We are going to draw trend lines using the eyeball method. There are programs out there and calculators that will do a perfect trend line for you. For this class, we are not going to use calculators or Excel spreadsheets to make trend lines. We are just going to use our eyeball method to draw the lines. When you draw a line of best fit, if you are given a table, you can go through data points that are in your table. If you are not given a table, you want to make sure your trend line goes through places where we have the X and Y coordinates crossing each other. So here we have a problem. It says make a scatter plot of the data. Describe the correlation and draw a line of best fit and write its equation. So the first thing we are going to do is make a scatter plot. And one of those things we need to do is figure out what we're going to use for our scales. As you notice, we have hours studied in our left column, test score in the right column. And so that means our hours studied is our independent variable. So make sure you label your graphs. This is hours studied. This is test score on the vertical. We also need to indicate our scale. And for our study, I'm just gonna go by ones. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then for my test scores, I'm going to go by tens. So 10, 20, 30, 40, this is 50 in the middle, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 on the top. So there's my scale. And then we're gonna plot our points. One goes to 40, one also goes to 50, two goes up to 65, two goes to 75 also, three goes up to 80, five goes up to 90, six goes up to 80, seven goes to 85, seven also goes to 90, and seven goes to 100. 
So there's my data points plotted on my chart. So the next thing it is is describe the correlation. For this one, as we have more hours studied, you will notice that our test scores get better. So we have a positive correlation. So our correlation is positive. And as hours studied increases, test scores increase. Then it says on part two, it says draw a line of best fit and write its equation. When we draw a line of best fit, if we have a table, we can go through two points that are on the table so we can use those points to write our equation. If we are not given a table and we are just given a scatter plot, we need to make sure our line of best fit goes through where the X and Y coordinates cross each other. What I mean by that is we would have to make sure our line, if we don't have a data set, we'd have to make sure like our line went through like a point right here where six goes to 90 and then maybe another point right here where two goes to 50. For us on this table, for this scatter plot, we have a table. So I just need to make sure I go through two of the points that are in my table. We want a line that's going to represent the data the best. And so what I try to do is I find a way to make my line that has as many points above the line as are below it, or roughly that many. And I think if I use the point 150 and the point 7100, my line will be pretty good. Here is my line. It goes through both points 150 and it also goes through 7100. When you make your lines, use a straight edge. Do not have your line curving all over the place. Make sure it's straight uh, so it goes through two very nice points. And you can actually see if your line is representing the data the best. Now it says to write the equation. Well, I need to make some room on here so I can write my equation. So I'm going to erase this stuff in red. And I'm going to write my equation using my two points. And I'm going to demonstrate using the two points because a lot of times you won't be able to just use a eyeball on the graph to find your slope. So we have points 150 and 7, 100. We did our slope. M is the Y minus the Y over the X minus the X, which is 50 over 6, which is 25 thirds. So that is my slope. We now have M is 25 thirds. We then will need to use one of our points to use our slope and our point to write the equation of the line. Again, I need room, so I'm going to erase this work here. I'm going to use point 150 with my slope 25 over 3 to write my equation. Whenever we write the equation of a line, from a scatter plot, we always use slope intercept. So you must have y equals mx plus b for your trend line or your line of best fit. So anytime you do an equation for a scatter plot for a line of best fit, it must be in slope intercept form. So we're going to plug in our y, which is 50. We're going to plug in our slope, which is 25 over 3. We're going to plug in our x value we need to find B. So 50 equals 25 thirds plus B. We're going to subtract 25 thirds from both sides to find our B. And if we do 50 and we minus 25 thirds, this becomes 150 over 3 minus 25 thirds, which is B. And we do this, we have 150 minus 25 is 125 thirds. And I'm going to make this into a mixed number so it makes a little more sense. When you divide 125 divided by 3, you get B is 41 and 2 thirds. We are now going to write our equation using our slope, using our intercept. And again, I need to make room. 
So I'm going to erase what I just did and write my equation. And we get y equals my slope, 25 over 3, x plus 41 and 2 thirds. And there we have the equation of our trend line. So again, when we make a scatter plot and we have to make the line of best fit, if you have a table, go through the points, two of the points from your table if possible, or make sure your line goes through where the X and Y's cross each other. Let me know what points you are using to create your equation of the line, because we are going to get different answers depending on what points you go through. I need to know what points you are using. So make sure you indicate those points. Also, when you do this again, make sure you label your graphs and show your scales. All right. If you come upon a graph that has large numbers, there is something we can do to make this easier to graph. One of those things I can do with this graph is I have one goes to 40. I can put, and you'll see this in your book, a break in my graph. This little line here with this little, like that, means we have a break in our graph. If we have a break in our graph, instead of having to start with zero, we can start at 40. We can do this if we need to, but make sure you show the break. You cannot graph across the break. So if you use one of these breaks in the graph, you cannot draw a line then through where the break is. That is a no-no. Okay, but if you have large graphs, you can use a break so you can start at a reasonable number and your graphs are not humongous. That is all for section 4.4, scatter plots and trend lines. Today we talked about correlation, whether it's positive, negative, or no correlation. We also looked at how to make a scatter plot and to draw a line of best fit and then write the equation for it. Make sure you're showing all your work. Give me your scales. Give me your points that you use for your line, your line equations. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.